Another week, another SpaceX record. You'd think by now I'd be getting blasé about this stuff, but I just can't. Hey, everybody, I'm Steve Green with Bill Whittle and Zoe Rachel filling in for Scott Ott this week. This is Right Angle, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. Gentlemen, if everything goes according to plan, just minutes after we finish taping this segment on uh, Wednesday, May 26, SpaceX will complete its one hundredth successful launch in a row. And what really gets me about this is that record only goes back to 2015. So not just 100 successful launches, 100 successful launches in under six years. Uh, this is a, a Starlink launch they have set for today. And for the first time, the company SpaceX is only using a rocket for the second time for Starlink. They usually use older rockets that nobody else wants to pay for. Um, so Ars Technica, one of my favorite uh, go-to websites for this kind of news, says that uh, it may suggest that the company's customers are getting more comfortable with using used rockets because this is just like the next rocket they have in line to reuse for their own Starlink launches. And as I kind of try and formulate a question for you about this, the only thing that really comes to mind is, doesn't this just blow your mind? <laughs> Indeed, it does, man. What is this website? Was it uh, Mar Mars Technica? Ars Technica. A R S Technica. Great, great reporting on space stuff from them. Yeah, man. I'm thinking I'm going after some deep technological websites by going to Fiverr, but uh, looking up, <laughs> trying, to, <laughs> trying to find some some you know people to talk tech with and stuff like that. Uh, in, in case anybody's wondering, I'm here to make sure that everybody really starts to pray fervently for Scott to come back. It's like, who is this crazy person, <laughs> Zoe, that they have on a Scott, can you hurry up and get your stuff together, man, so you can get back on the show? Uh, anyway, uh, what do I think? Now, a hundred, uh, they've landed. They've landed a hundred launches. That's they pretty impressive. They haven't landed that many. They've lost a few landing. There. But <laughs> successful getting satellites, people, whatever, up into space. No, no, see, I was doing a little play on it. They landed a hundred launches, right? See, I was kind of trying to tie it in there, but you know, that's like, that's, uh, that's sorry, the I'm thing. I'm a little though. slow today. H have, have you landed a hundred times though? Uh, that's the thing I'm concerned. That's, that's the thing that's going to really impress us. No, the whole thing is very impressive, man. And, uh, hey, you know, let's go where no man has gone before. Let's make it happen. Indeed. Uh, Bill, the, uh, the other part that uh, kind of gets me about this is, uh, Every couple of years, I go back and I reread Thomas Wolfe's The Right Stuff because there's something uh -huh. that uh, uh, Wolfe talks about in that in that wonderful book that uh, used to make me very, very sad. We were having our own little private space race out in the Nevada desert as the Air Force kept sending these planes, nearly space planes, closer and closer to the edge of space. And it looked like, uh, at least in retrospect, that that sort of Jetson future is how we were going to get uh, up into space. But then Sputnik happened. The Soviets put a satellite into space on a rocket. And so all of that Air Force stuff got kind of... Uh, second class citizen treatment and all the money went to NASA and the big rockets, uh, you know, Gemini and Mercury and Apollo and all that. And I always felt like there was a really cool future that got robbed from us become, because of Sputnik. But now I look at what uh, Elon Musk is doing in Texas and I wonder if we're not getting an even better future. What do you think? That's a great question, Steve. Um, it, it's hard It's hard to have looked at something like um, – uh, it will, the, the space shuttle, if you watch the space shuttle take off or land uh, and then you realize that the thing after the space shuttle is a dragon capsule, then it, it seems kind of like a like a step down. You know, it's, it's a great capsule, but it, it certainly doesn't have the, the grandeur and the majesty and, and all the rest of it that the that the shuttle had. It looks like a step backwards, but it doesn't have the grandeur or the majesty of the shuttle because it doesn't have the complexity of the shuttle. And. Now we begin to get down to the brass tacks about how sometimes simple is better than than flashy. Um, the the main problem with the space shuttle, in my opinion, was that the space shuttle was the was the only system to get stuff into space. So if you wanted to lift something heavy, you use the shuttle. If you wanted to take people, you use the shuttle. And the risk factors for people versus cargo are significantly different because you can afford to lose cargo. Um, the when the shuttle was flying and, and it looked like everything was going to be that kind of future you were talking about, that kind of, you know, dinosaur X-15 winged vehicles will fly it up, will land it on an airport, all, all this stuff. 
the people referred to the alternative, the Sputnik alternative, as the big dumb rocket. You know, it's yeah. just a big dumb rocket. Well, SpaceX has started out building big dumb rockets, and, and now they're building big smart rockets. And this is the game changer. The, the entire advantage of, of, the, of the space plane was its reusability. That was the, that was the cell. The, the shuttle was something you just reuse again and again and again and again and again. That's why it has to be so complex. That's why it has to be so expensive. But Elon Musk comes along and says, well, what if we were to just take the simplicity and the reliability of a big dumb, dumb rocket and find a way to, to recycle all of that too? And he did. Uh, and to be fair, while many people say, oh, we couldn't have gone to the moon in the 60s, we didn't have the technology, the computer technology. Well, it turns out we, we didn't need the computer technology to go to the moon, but you do need tech, computer technology to land a rocket on a postage stamp that's floating out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And that's just not something you can hand fly down. So, uh, so this idea of a fully reusable rocket is a game changer because you have the fundamental simplicity and reliability of a rocket as opposed to the shuttle, which ended up killing 14 people, you know, although not the shuttle, the band-aids, the solid rocket boosters yeah. and the external tank. At the same time, you have the, you have the economy of reusability. The, the problem with this, with, prior to the shuttle, we had the Saturn V, and this thing is just, just an incredibly massive, amazing thing, but you, you throw all of it away, all of it, including the, the, the one part that comes back, the capsule. Here's Elon Musk saying, no, we're not just going to bring the capsule back and use that as many times as we want. We're going to bring the boosters back and we're going to bring the strap-on boosters back. They're, I think they're recovering the fairings now. Wow. Uh, uh, it's just like this This is, is why the guy is so remarkable is because he's able to really think outside the box in the, in the biggest possible way. Right. And that's really what, what we're about to see. If, if this launch goes off according to plan, and I fully expect that it will, it'll be 100 consecutive launches. And, and the, just to close, Steve, the thing that, that Musk, the thing I admire most about Elon Musk is more than anybody I've ever seen in, in either uh, space or aviation. That guy is willing to explode aluminum uh, at a rate that no one else I have ever seen, ever. And there's a great uh, old book now called Fate is the Hunter about the early days of commercial uh, aviation, right? Just propeller driven commercial airplanes in the in the 40s and right after the war. And they were losing an airliner every week. Every week there'd be an airliner crashing you know, or, or, or two fly into a mountain or, or just you know, break apart in air or whatever. And we've now gone almost exactly 20 years without a without a fatality on a major uh, American air carrier. 20 years, 40,000, 50,000 flights a day. And the reason we do that is because our operational tempo is so high. The main reason we do it is because we have basically had every single kind of failure and crash that there is possible to have. And for once as a species, we are learning the lessons from those failures and we don't have to learn them again. So all of these federal aviation regulations are written in blood and and what Musk is doing is he is beating the gremlins out of the system by flying it so many times that there aren't any gremlins left for the ride anymore. You know, I'm glad you mentioned op, op tempo because I want to kind of close on that thought. And I mean no disrespect, by the way, to the uh, men and women at United Launch Alliance with what I'm about to say, because they have some of the best aerospace engineers working at ULA. And in fact, one of them, well, since retired, is one of my closest friends in the whole world. So I, I have nothing but respect for the men and women who get those huge rockets into space and launch those commercial satellites, those Air Force spy satellites and all the rest. They do amazing work. But the management at ULA didn't have the imagination to see the future, the possibility, the potential that, that Elon Musk is building right now or has built in down in Texas. It's, it's been amazing to watch. When I said there's a new record being set every week, I was being a little facetious, but not by much. Um, just last week or maybe two weeks ago, a Falcon 9 SpaceX rocket took off for the 10th time, a record reuse of an engine. It used to be reusing a, a, a launcher once was thought to be impossible. Well, one of these Falcon 9s has now flown successfully 10 times. Its first flight was back in 2017. And in that time, all of ULA has only made 11 launches total. 
The future is here. They're building it down in Texas. It's an amazing thing to watch. And that's your right angle on that. Brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. Just want to remind you, content like this needs sponsors like you. So if you've been watching for free, we'd love to have you on board. Go to BillWhittle.com. Become a member. Thanks. We'll see you next time.